Hello, my name is Jennifer Moss of WGVU Public Media. On behalf of Groundswell, I am here today to talk about how you can help protect our water. We are exploring the Lower Grand River watershed. Today we will learn more about specific pollutants that impact the health of our watershed and what we can do to help. We'll be talking with students and community experts about non-point source pollution. Now this is pollution that is picked up by rain and snow melt as it flows over the ground. It comes from all over the watershed. Polluted runoff can occur anywhere rain falls. In our watershed, sediment is one of the main types of non-point source pollution. We are here with Groundswell students and local experts from Trout Unlimited. They are going to help us understand where sediment comes from, when it is a problem, and what we can all do to help. Sediment is the material that settles to the bottom of a lake or stream. It includes clay, sand, gravel, and even organic materials such as decaying leaves and wood. Sediment is naturally present in aquatic ecosystems and is an important part of the system. Human activities can lead to excess sediment in lakes or streams. Excess sediment disrupts natural ecosystem processes and can reduce water quality. There are three main sources of excess sediment in the Lower Grand River watershed. These sources are agriculture, runoff from urban areas, and stream bank erosion. On farms, sediment can enter streams from crop fields and areas with livestock. Rain flowing over farm fields can carry away topsoil if it isn't held in place by plants. Animals also trample vegetation, which can lead to increased erosion. Making sure the soil is covered by plants throughout the year can help reduce the amount of sediment entering streams from farms. In urban areas, rain erodes soil and carries it down storm drains that enter into rivers and streams. Construction sites are a major source of excess sediment in cities. Constructing new buildings and roads involves removing vegetation and digging up dirt. These activities expose soil to rain and increase the risk of erosion. Installing sediment barriers around construction sites can help prevent soil from entering nearby waterways. Making sure soil is covered by vegetation can also make a big difference. Stream bank erosion is the third biggest source of excess sediment in our watershed. In urban areas, the natural water cycle is disrupted because impervious surfaces prevent rainwater from soaking into the soil. Instead, it flows over the surface and into storm drains. These drains connect to a system of underground pipes designed to remove stormwater from urban areas as quickly as possible to prevent flooding. By the time the pipe empties into a stream or river, it has collected stormwater from a very large area of the city, so this large volume of water is moving very fast. It hits the stream or river with a lot of force, like opening up a fire hose. This erosive force scours stream banks in the stream bed, eroding soil, stirring up sediments, and carrying it all downstream. Now we know where sediment comes from, but why is it a problem? Soil is a natural part of our environment, but it can disrupt the natural systems when too much of it enters our waterways. One way excess sediment impacts lakes and streams is by increasing turbidity. Turbidity is a way to measure how clear the water is. Have you ever walked by a stream after a big rain and noticed that it looks cloudy and murky? That was turbidity. Excess sediment can make the water very cloudy and reduce the amount of sunlight from shining through. With less sunlight, plants will have more trouble growing, and fewer plants means less food for other organisms that eat the plants. So it can really have a lot of negative effects throughout the food web. Another way excess sediment impacts lakes and streams is by damaging habitat. Many fish and aquatic organisms rely on gravel for habitat and to lay eggs. Excess sediment in a stream can cover up these gravel beds, eliminating habitat and spawning sites the organisms need to survive. Too much sediment in the water can also directly impact people. One impact is on our food supply. Erosion reduces the quality of farm fields by carrying away fertile topsoil. This can make it harder for farmers to grow the food we eat. Our transportation systems also can be affected. We use our rivers to move a lot of things. Excess sediment eventually falls to the bottom of rivers and makes them more shallow. This makes it more difficult for boats to travel along the river. The excess sediment has to be removed so boats can get through, which is very expensive. So, what can we do about it? Local students and community experts are here to share what they have done to make a difference. Nash Creek runs right through downtown Sparta. A couple of years ago, the trees were cut down along the banks of part of the creek. This left the soil exposed. 
When it rained, the soil was eroding and washing into the creek. This reduces the quality of the water in the creek, and it makes the area around the banks less stable. Hi, I'm a student from Appleby Elementary School in Sparta, Michigan. We talked to several local experts to figure out what we could do to restore the banks. First, we had to get the permission of the village, and we had to have help figuring out what types of plants we should plant to hold down the soil. We wanted plants that would help remove pollution from the storm runoff, too. We decided to plant native plants along the stream bank. These plants naturally grow in this part of Michigan. They have long root systems that are good at keeping soil in place. This helps prevent erosion. The vegetation also filters water that flows over the banks. This helps remove pollution carried by runoff and keeps the creek clean. We also wanted the community to know why we were restoring the banks, so we invited them to come help plant with us. That way we can explain the benefits of native plants for reducing pollution so it is meaningful to them. Hopefully they will go home and share what they have learned with their families and neighbors. We're really excited about this opportunity to protect Nash Creek from erosion and excess sediment. Restoring the stream banks will improve water quality and provide a beautiful natural area for the community to enjoy. It also provides a great educational opportunity to teach people about non-point source pollution and what they can do to help. One of the best things you can do is to help teach people about the problem. Teach them that non-point source pollution is one of the biggest threats to healthy rivers and lakes. Let them know their actions will make a difference even if they live far from a lake or river. Non-point source pollution is a tough problem to solve because it's happening everywhere. But that's why we need to come together. We need a groundswell to change communities living in our shared watershed. Together, we can help keep our water clean. This video was made possible through support from the U.S. Environmental Protection Agency, Michigan Department of Environmental Quality, Grand Valley State University College of Education, and WGVU Public Media.